You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. Guess what? It is a Freaker Friday, and yeah, man, I've been checking out Twitter off and on today, and wow, it really is a sign of the times that we, I'm not real sure what kind of sign it is other than stop. Please, somebody stop the world and let me off. Cause, or maybe spin so fast that a lot of those um, <clears throat> light in the head kind of individuals just go flying off. Maybe that would be a good thing. I don't know. Wow, I got to remember everything I put out there comes back at me. Mm, so I try to behave myself just a little bit. Maybe not as intense as what I put it out. But ooh, um, beetle, yeah, bears do hibernate. <laughs> over in the chat yeah you're listening if you're listening i'm sure you know what you're listening on but i'm coming to you via real liberty media.com channel 10 or the rlm radio.xyz site or the rlm tune in radio station or the rlm internet radio station or uh the real liberty media spreaker channel god i'm i'm everywhere i'm everywhere it's kind of scary ain't it um, yellow, oh, it's a yellow face bear. Uh, he must have had his face in the honey jar. <laughs> That's poo. It's Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. La da da. No, I much prefer to take her T I double gut er. Because they got springs in their tails and all that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, in case you're wondering, this is what it's like all the time. <laughs> if you're new. Just saying. Okay, over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. I also see BB is over here. Hey there, Blackbird9. How are you doing, hon? And thank you for tweeting it out as well. Uh, let's see. Over here on, I didn't put anything on Facebook because, eh, you know, eh. <laughs> I'm just not feeling it. I gotta say it. Okay, over here on realliberty.org. Thank you, Grimner, for letting everyone know over here. I see Grimmy and Rob Works are on right now. Quite a few people had been on throughout the day, but right now just see a couple, at least friend-wise, people I have friended um, that are live. I know, Rascal, you're trying to help me again, but, sweetheart, you're getting tangled up in my leash. And God knows we don't need that. Silly kitty. So, thank you, Grim, for posting over here on realliberty.org. Come on over, everybody. It's just realliberty.org. And uh, join in. Lots of way cool people here. Uh, let me try and see if I can see a count on how many people. I probably, I probably just scrolled right past it, knowing me. <laughs> what was that? Wait a minute. In point of fact, fluoride causes more human cancer death and causes it faster than any other chemical. Go figure. Thanks for sharing that, Grim. Yeah. Fluoride is nasty stuff. It's nasty stuff. Okay, let me, let me, I'm arguing with my dang cursor. There. I had to, I had to do the, oh my God face on that. Now, moving along, over here to that Freedoms Network, that effing site. Thank you, Grim, over here for letting people know that I am live and in poison. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Who else is over here besides me and Grim? Just checking, scrolling, 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 keep that cursor rolling. Hey, Chris of the Family Masters is here. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Let's see. They may take our lives and 40% of our income, our right to smoke a plant, fish, and hunt without a license, collect rainwater, drink raw milk, sell lemonade in our front yard, travel freely between countries, purchase alcohol on Sunday, and our choice to not wear a seat belt or buy health insurance. But they'll never take our... 
okay, wait a minute, where was I going with this? Oh my God, that is so me. <laughs> That's a squirrel meme if I ever saw one. And Grimmy posted that one as well. Good job, Grim. Um, oh, I have replies over here too. Really? Some more? Bob Renner. Hi, Bob. How you doing, hon? Over here on this effing site. Oh, he's got another underground social network. Cool. I may just have to go check that one out. I see a flasher going on. Yes, Grim, I have a leash. <laughs> it doesn't really control me much other than keep me seated at the computer. Because, you know, if I had wireless headphones or something, I might be rambling all over the place. You never know. I might get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of a radio show. <laughs> no, my radio isn't that long anymore, which is good. Because there were a few times there doing the two-hour long show where I was most ne definitely dancing in the chair, and it wasn't because I was listening to music. We'll just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> Um, let's see. That's the effing site. That's realliberty.org. I didn't do fakey book. I did Twitter over on Minds. I'm sure they shared it. Did you know that your daughter can't go to an R-rated movie without her mother's permission, but she can get an abortion on her own? Is that bass backwards or what? I'm thinking, yes, it is. Very bass backwards. And that is a sign of the times. Something, and you know, it really isn't the times that are changing. It really isn't, because time is just now. You know, all this other fun stuff is just superfluous BS, but it's the people, you know, and some of that is because of the programming, and some of it's because of the crap they have in our food, and in our water, and in the air, and man, I was listening to a video about geoengineering and climate engineering. You do not call it chemtrails anymore. Because if you call it chemtrails, then they put a, a tinfoil hat on your head, which is fine. You know, I have one for every day of the week. But if you want to get people to actually pay attention to you and take you seriously, you're supposed to call it climate engineering or geoengineering. Either way, they're messing with things that they do not understand the full implications of what they're doing. Don't you know? So... They need to cut it out. They may know, you know, kind of sort of what they're doing, but I don't think they know the full implications of it. And I really don't think they care because whoever they are, the ones that are doing this, which there's a, a Dr. David Keith, is that his name? One of them that's really big on this climate engineering crap. Um, no, uh, I saw on a video somewhere where he was being interviewed and he said that no, there haven't actually been any studies to check and see if this is safe for the environment or safe for humans, but we're going to do it anyway. Wow. That's the mindset. Kind of scary, ain't it? People out there like that. Mm-hmm. And I got to check this one link here real quick. Let me see. What was this? Uh, oh, oh, I may have to go there. But first, I'm going to have to say hey to everybody over here in the chat because, yeah, they're such good chatters over here. Um, <clears throat> I call it a big back, big tic-tac-toe in the sky is what I call it. Cammy trails to you until we hack again. Yeah, that's pretty much what it does. In any case, over here in the RLM chat, which if you are listening in on Spreaker and you want to give me some static honey, sweetheart, I would love to be able to play along on Spreaker as well. But I got crap internet out here. So come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. And, you know, odds are everybody else in the chat will pile on right along with you because that's what we do. <laughs> but right up top we got barman the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world closely followed by cowboy tech who is always hearing pleasant voices man don't ever get your hearing check cowboy don't ever do it i also see grimner is here who is the rlm god don't you know as well as the lovely moose goyle hey moosey it's frigid up there up yonder yes it is bless your heart miss moosey 
And uh, Moosey and Grim will be on later on this evening with the Freakers Ball, because it is a Freaker Friday after all. So, you know, we're going to have good time. Well, somebody is. I probably won't stay up for it, because I, I just go to bed too early for that. <sighs> oh, well. The lovely Kate is also here. Hey, Kate, how you doing? How's things down in Florida? Don't tell me what the temperature is. I don't want to know. I'd be jealous. I'd be whining. Somebody have to call me a wambulance. I also see Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, as well as Chloe and Chalcedoni. The lovely Cycle is also logged in. Hey, Sister Cycle. And look, got another dose of Chloe. So we got a double mint gum of Chloe going on. Echelon is also here, as well as yours truly. I be Don C is in the chat as well as Meister Brower. Hey Woody, how's things? Oh, Rob is piling on. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Ow, my arm's pinched. <laughs> Moving along. Hi, Rain. How are you doing, hun? I also see RLM Fluke, the Ben White of the RLM channel. And there's that Rob Works again, and he fired up that bubbler and passed it around. Bless your heart, Rob. You the man. You the goddamn man. And looky there. Rome's is in the house. Hey, Rome's. How you doing, hun? Vinny. 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 He's, Vinny, Vinny has multiple facets. That's a nice way of saying he's got lots of personalities. There's an S on the end of that. <laughs> Bless your heart, Vinny. I also see Phantom is here, that wonderful young man that did my um, intro to the radio show. Bless your heart, Phantom. Beetle! Hey, Beetle. How you doing? And uh, what was you checking? Um, do what? You're not waking up to what? I'm not waking up to this thing to check its face. I can't say as I blame you, hun. I don't blame you. Okay. And Beetle saw a MILF earlier. Apparently that meme that I shared earlier. <laughs> oh, Beetle, you're so funny. Cyborg Noodle. Hey, Cyborgian Noodle. It is Friday, Pastafarian Holy Day. May you be touched by a Cyborgian noodliness. I also see Dakota is in the house as well as Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. And Gromit and Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is here as well. And JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. That Scottish feller. He's so fun. To, I love his accent. There's no way I could do it because I would just totally befuddle it up. But, dude, I love your accent. Kozu is also in the house as well as Moy, 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 Moy. That's the name that Flash won't say because I, th I think it bothers him. Makes his tumor bleed or something like that. Nenson Dubois is also here. Hey, Nenson, how you doing, sweetheart? As well as Ponder Gander. I think that's Vinny trying to be incognito, but there's no such thing as Vinny being incognito. He just doesn't know how. We got a trifecta of pox in the chat box going on. We got poxified, poxophone, and pox of home going on, as well as some pom -po pom -po pom sauce and some sock puppet. You got to watch out for sock puppets because, <clears throat> you know, if they've been so busy, they've worn a hole in the moving along. <laughs> Hi, Skittle. How you doing, hon? Skittle is the former F-bombinator. I haven't seen Skittle drop an F-bomb in a long time. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Uno, the card game that keeps on giving and makes I just don't do good. I'm sorry, Rob, that you missed the MILF. It's over on mines. <coughs> hmm. 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 Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in any case, I was watching that thing about uh, climate change and, and uh, climate engineering and geoengineering. And, and really, it was one of those where um, what they're not telling you or something like that. I had no idea it was about climate change till I clicked it, which is okay because I was kind of doing a random ramble on YouTube today while doing chores and that was one of them that came up in my suggestions and I went what the hey that looks interesting because that's pretty much how I pick videos <laughs> oh that looks interesting <laughs> it's a headline grabber kind of thing you know and sometimes I listen for more than three minutes 
You know, like I listen to the whole thing, unless it's only three minutes, and then I listen to the whole thing. But there are times. There was one that I went to this morning that I thought, "Wow, this is cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy this just because the headline." <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> after about five minutes of finding out about all kinds of biblical quotes and all kind of other fun stuff, I went, "No, I'm just not in the mood." I am just not in the mood. And it was basically, you know, there's supposed to be a, all debts are forgiven and jubilee and yada, yada, yada. And I'm thinking, sweet, you know, and it's supposed to be a Q thing. And I was curious about that because from what I understand, Q hasn't posted for a while or there was a little bit um, last week, I guess, or maybe the beginning of this week and then nothing again. And so people are going, where's Q? Where's Q? And I'm just like, okay, I'll just check this one out. And wow, honey. I just, mm, I know there's an awful lot of people that just swear by and swear on that Bible, but I cannot get past the fact that it was written by men. And I'm not just saying men as in M-A-L-E, I'm saying men as in humans. And I know how crappy internet signals can be and how crappy cell phone signal can be and Wi-Fi, and all that other fun stuff. And I think, God talked to you, and there wasn't any static. You didn't have any interference. You didn't have any. And now I want... You don't have any of that shit? Excuse me? But wow. You know, I... No, it was written by a woman. And therefore, it has woman tendencies to go with the woman's perspective. I know it's a good book. I know it's got an awful lot of really good lessons in it. But other than that, it's a book written by humans. So there. Now, this is one that it was a suggested over here in my pocket. And it's from fee.org. Foundation for Economic Education. And the title is, Millions Died Thanks to Mother of Environmentalism. Carson made a criti critical mistake and a lot of people died as a result. Now, this was posted in June of 2017. So, PBS aired a two-hour special on Rachel Carson, the mother of the environmental movement. Although the program crossed the line from biography to um, hagiog hagiography, hagi whatever, H-A-G-I-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y, whatever the heck that is. In Carson's case, the unbridled praise was well-deserved with one exception. Rachel Carson was an American hero. In the early 1960s, she was the first to warn that a pesticide called DDT could accumulate in the environment. The first to show that it could harm fish, birds, and other wildlife. The first to warn us that its overuse would render it ineffective. And the first to predict that more natural means of pest control, like bacteria that killed mosquito larvae, should be used instead. Unfortunately... The PBS documentary neglected to mention that in her groundbreaking book, Silent Spring, Carson had made one critical mistake, and it cost millions of people their lives. What was that mistake? I'm curious. Now, on the 1st of November, 1941, Rachel Carson published her first book, Under the Sea Wind. And although written for adults, the book had a childlike sense of wonder. Under the Sea Wind told the story of Silver Bar, a um, sanderling that migrated from the Arctic Circle to Argentina. Scomber, a mackerel that traveled from New England to the Continental Shelf. And Angola, an American eel that journaled to the um, Sar Sargasso Sea to spawn. Hmm, there is poetry here, wrote one reviewer. Now, in July 2nd, or on July 2nd of 1951, Carson published her second book, The Sea Around Us. Two months later, The Sea Around Us was number one on the New York Times bestseller list, where it remained for 39 weeks 
that was a record. And when the dust settled, the sea around us had sold more than 1.3 million copies, had been translated into 32 languages, and won the National Book Award, and been made into a movie. Editors of the country's leading newspapers voted Rachel Carson Woman of the Year. Unlike, you know, Michelle Obama, who just dresses really, honey, seriously, you need to find someone else to dress you. Because, man, the... The ensembles you come up with, not attractive for your body shape. Just saying. Now, to go on with this article. In October of 1955, Carson published her third book, The Edge of the Sea. It's a tour guide for the casual adventurer. And the New Yorker serialized it, critics praised it, and the public loved it. More than 70,000 copies were sold as it rocketed to number four on the New York Times bestseller list. Today, most people under the age of 40 have probably never heard of Rachel Carson. But in the early 60s, almost every American knew her name. So, on September 27, 1962, Rachel Carson changed her tone. Her next book, Silent Spring, which she called her poison book, was an angry, no-holds-barred uh, polemic against pesticides, especially DDT. Now, the first chapter of Silent Spring, titled A Fable for Tomorrow, was almost biblical, appealing to our sense that we had sinned against our Creator. There was once a town in the heart of America where all life seemed to live in harmony with its surroundings. Then a strange blight crept over the area, and everything began to change. The cattle and sheep sickened and died. Streams were lifeless. Everywhere there was a shadow of death. Birds especially had fallen victim to the strange evil. In a town that had once throbbed with scores of birds' voices, there was now no sound, only silence. A silent spring. Birds weren't alone in their suffering, according to Carson. Children suffered sudden death. A plastic anemia, birth defects, liver disease, chromosomal, chromosomal ana or abnormalities, and leukemia, all caused by DDT. And women suffered infertility and uterine cancer. Carson made it clear that she wasn't talking about something that might happen. She was talking about something that had happened. Our war against nature had become a war against ourselves. In May of 1963, Rachel Carson appeared before the Department of Commerce and asked for a pesticide commission to regulate the untethered use of DDT. Ten years later, Carson's Pesticide Commission became the Environmental Protection Agency, which immediately banned DDT. Following America's lead, support for international use of DDT quickly dried up. Now, although DDT soon became synonymous with poison, the pesticide was an effective weapon in a fight against an infection that has killed and continues to kill more people than any other, and that is malaria. So by 1960, due largely to DDT, malaria had been, been eliminated from 11 countries, including the United States. Now, as malaria rates went down, Life expectancies went up, as did crop production, land values, and relative wealth. Probably no country benefited from DDT more than Nepal, where spraying began in 1960. And at the time, more than 2 million Nepalese, mostly children, suffered from malaria. By 1968, the number was reduced to 2,500, and life expectancy increased from 28 to 42 years. Wow. 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 That's a, that's a, wow. Neither one, I wouldn't be here. I would have never met my grandchildren. No, I would have met my, I'd have met my oldest grandchild if that was our life expectancy here. Wow. <clears throat> no, Wait, no, I wouldn't have. I would not have met any of my grandchildren. Wait a minute, what was I thinking? Well, even at 42, no, I wouldn't have met any of my grandchildren. Jeez, no, no, that sucks.
Now, after DDT was banned, malaria reemerged across the globe. In India, between 1952 and 1962, DDT caused a decrease in annual malaria cases from 100 million to 60,000. By the late 1970s, no longer able to use DDT, the number of cases increased to 6 million. In Sri Lanka, before the use of DDT, 2.8 million people suffered from malaria. When the spraying stopped, only 17 people suffered from the disease. Then, no longer able to use DDT, Sri Lanka suffered a massive malaria epidemic. 1.5 million people were infected by the parasite. In South Africa, after DDT became unavailable, the number of malaria cases increased from 8,500 to 42,000, and malaria deaths from 22 to 320. Now, since the mid-1970s, when DDT was eliminated from global eradication efforts, tens of millions of people have died from malaria unnecessarily. Most have been children less than five years old. Now, while it was reasonable to have banned DDT for agricultural use, it was unreasonable to have eliminated it from public health use. Oh man, I'm not so sure I like that idea. Cause man, did you not did you not see what was happening to? Okay, you have death or you have death. You have death. Pretty much either side of that coin. Now, envir environmentalists have argued that when it came to DDT, it was pick your poison. If DDT was banned, more people would die from malaria. But if DDT wasn't banned, people would suffer and die from a variety of other diseases, not the least of which was cancer. However, studies in Europe, Canada, and the United States have since shown that DDT didn't cause the human diseases Carson had claimed. Are you sure? Let's find out what they have to say. Indeed, the only type of cancer that had increased in the United States during the DDT era was lung cancer, which was caused by cigarette smoking. How many people don't smoke cigarettes and still die from uh, lung cancer? I'll wait. Yeah. It's not just cigarettes. Yes, they are a contributing factor, but they are not the only factor. And you have to understand how they came up with the numbers. I keep telling people this. It's any time you do any kind of data analysis, when they tell you twice, you're twice as likely, you have to stop and realize. In the data analysis, they took 100 people that didn't smoke and they took 100 people that did smoke. Out of the 100 people that didn't smoke during the length of the study, one of them died from lung cancer or heart disease. In the 100 people that did smoke, two did. Therefore, they said you're twice as likely. That's how they came up with the numbers. So don't just take them at their word because they're going to tell you how they want to sell it. Just putting that out there. This also goes on to say DDT was arguably one of the safer insect repellents ever invented far safer than many of the pesticides that have taken its place. I don't know, wasn't DDT created by the precursor of Monsatan? Just curious. Carson's supporters argued that she had lived longer, or had she lived longer, she would never have promoted a ban on DDT for the control of malaria. Indeed, in Silent Spring, Carson wrote, it is not my contention that chemical pesticides never be used. But it was her contention that DDT caused leukemia, liver disease, birth defects, premature deaths, and a whole range of chronic illnesses. And you cannot tell me that when you treat the environment with a poison, and that environment winds up bringing things that are part of your food chain, you cannot tell me that doesn't get carried into you and affect you in an adverse manner. You just, I, I refuse to follow that whole well, it's not going to affect you, just like GMOs. Well, it's not going to affect you. Really? The reason it doesn't, you can say that is because you have buried the evidence and you have silenced those that have come up with actual, honest, scientific experiments to show that, yes, it does carry through the food chain and, yes, it does cause issues with others, health issues. Now to get back to this, 
An influential author can't, on one hand, claim that DDT causes leukemia, which in 1962 was a death sentence, and then on the other hand expect that anything less than a total ban of the chemical would result. Why not? In, the, in 2006, the World Health Organi Organization reinstated DDT as part of its effort to eradicate malaria, but not before millions of people had died needlessly from the disease. This was a reprint from the Daily Beast. And you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other in my books. You want them to linger or you want them to linger? You want them to die or you want them to die? Uh, let's see. I do not believe the government is my friend, Sock Puppet. Just saying. They are not a friend of mine. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Because, yeah. Okay. You look at all of this fun stuff. And, uh. Did I put it? Okay. Now we have in the in the uh, videos, which I've shared them in the chat earlier today, and I can pull them up and share them again later if you wish. Um, talking about um, the climate engineering and the nanoparticles, which it's it's the fact that they're nanoparticles, so they're readily absorbable into your system, and nanoparticles can pass through the blood-brain barrier. So they can get in there. Things like barium and aluminum, which does not occur naturally. It has to be, um, oh, cripes. I can't think of the word they use now. But um, you have to, it's, uh, do, 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 do. you have to melt it down. You have to, you have to actually manufacture or create aluminum. Yes, but it is not in the, not in in nature it is not the way it is that we use it or that it's in the air so and a lot of this stuff you have to realize that they've been doing this for years and years and years and years and years sit but they've been changing the name you know they're cloud seeding that's that's climate engineering for those of you that don't know. Um, also, the whole thing of someone telling you that it's a contrail or a condensation trail. No. If that were true, if they truly were condensation set trails, then people walking around, like in the Arctic regions of the world, when they talked, when they breathed, they would have this plume that would follow them wherever they went when they pass gas they would have a plume that would be following them because the air that they are expelling is warmer than the air around it so it is not a contrail it is not a contrail don't let them shut you down with that and this is most definitely climate engineering now I'm going from them spraying bugs and spraying people to their and all this other fun stuff to spraying us. But what can we do about it? What can we do about it? Well, here's Dr. X to the rescue. You can detox with a um, chelation therapy to help your heart and your brain. Now, chelation therapy is considered an alternative medicine that has the purpose of removing heavy metals and toxins from the body. Part of the reason why you wish to remove a lot of these heavy metals and the toxins, and it's all tied together, do your own research, follow your own breadcrumbs. I'm sure you will, uh, you may not come to the same conclusions I do. <laughs> if you don't, that's fine because that's your perspective. This is my perspective. I'm just sharing mine with you and hopefully giving you some breadcrumbs to go and check out for yourself. But when you stop and think all of these metallic little nanoparticles that are going down and they're being incorporated into your body and then they're kicking in the 5G. You think 5G isn't going to affect that? It's a frequency. 5G is not going to affect all of those little nanoparticles in your body? You think that you've got natural weather going on? <laughs> it's a script. 
It's not natural. Not anymore. They've been doing the cloud seeding for too many decades. Ain't natural anymore. Now, to go on with Dr. Axe. I just had to throw that little bit in there. Why would someone experience heavy metal toxicity in the first place? Well, although it may sound like something only tied to a rare circumstance of accidental poisoning, heavy metals are more common than you think. If you have mercury fillings in your teeth or amalgam fillings, have been vaccinated to prevent various diseases, eat farm-raised fish regularly, consume foods that are grown in foreign countries like China that aren't certified organic, or are healing from radiation and chemotherapy treatments, you are likely experiencing heavy metal toxicity right now to some degree. Now chelation therapy involves a chemical solution called EDTA or yeah I'm not even gonna try and I think that's got like 20 letters in it <laughs> that's a big word it's an acid but <coughs> excuse me and it's administered into the body usually directly injected into the bloodstream so it can bind to excess minerals and once bound to toxins in the body, EDTA helps detox the body of heavy metals by removing them before imbalances and illnesses have the chance to develop. Now, what is chelation therapy good for? Well, it was first developed and used in the 1950s for the treatment of heavy metal poisoning. And chelation therapy using EDTA is now performed to remove common heavy metals including lead, mercury, copper, iron, arsenic, aluminum, and calcium. Now while still a controversial practice in mainstream medicine and one that requires more research for us to fully understand how it works, studies show that chelation therapy has the potential for reducing the risk of heightened inflammation, heart disease, infections, and more. And a national health interview survey conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, I'm thinking that prevention should be propagation, but that's just my personal opinion. They found that 111,000 adults 18 years or older had used chelation therapy as a form of complementary medicine between the years 2006 and 2007. And since the popularity of, of chelation therapy has grown since that time and more healthcare professionals are being trained in this practice, it's safe to say that this number is steadily rising. Yes, Rob works. So, many people have used chelation therapy regularly and feel that it helps them remain more energetic and immune to common illnesses or environmental toxins and stress and studies show that chelation is scientifically proven to rid the body of excess or toxic metals especially certain kinds like lead or mercury that can lead to poisoning now the US Food and Drug Administration has approved the use of e chelation therapy with EDTA for treating lead poisoning and continues to investigate its potential and safety as a new drug for reducing coronary heart disease symptoms. Now see once it, once they start doing this whole new drug stuff then and I know EDTA is produced by Big Pharma. But see there I think there's other ways that you can work to cleanse your body as well you know like Epsom salt and baking soda soaks and certain other things that you can do that will help keep those things flowing through your body and out cleaning them out of your system so EDTA is a type of man-made synthetic amino acid and as an alternative some practitioners also use another substance in EDTA's place called DMPS, which is another, yeah, I'm just going to use DMPS. <laughs> and it works similarly. Now, EDTA uh, chelation therapy works by binding salts to molecules in the blood. And once EDTA is administered into someone's veins, and uh, after EDTA attaches to the heavy metals, together they move to the kidneys where their elimination from the body occurs through urine. 
Now, it's possible that chelating agents like EDTA and DMPS can help detoxify the body of toxic elements that contribute to many types of chronic diseases. And chelation agents have specific bonds that form between organic molecules and metals. And this gives them the ability to bind to metals that build up in the blood, major organs, and blood vessels. Now, some chelating um, agents, such as peptides like glutathione and metallothionin, met metallothionin, I bet I didn't say that right, um, they've been well researched and proven to transport and excrete toxins from the body, all without the need of the aggressive surgeries and risky medications. And one of the biggest chelation therapy benefits is its ability to help control levels of various environmental metals in the body. Metals including lead, mercury, aluminum, and arsenic can cause short and long-term health consequences since they impact functions of the central nervous, cardiovascular, immune, and skeletal systems. Now when the body is out of homeostasis, Due to experiencing imbalances in minerals, malfunction and damage to vital organs can develop. Now some of the symptoms from heavy metal toxicity include chronic fatigue syndrome, trouble learning and remembering new information, brain fog and trouble concentrating, I, have, I was born with brain fog I think, autoimmune diseases, neurological disorders and cognitive decline, joint or muscle pain, mood changes including depression and anxiety. Now for that joint and muscle pain I'm thinking some ginger and some turmeric and some hmm. And then there's you know always the Epsom salt and baking soda soak. <laughs> now five of the benefits from chelation therapy are is that it might help improve um, heart health, it acts like an antioxidant, lowers pain and swelling, um, can help fight cognitive disorders, and helps lower the risk of learning disabilities such as ADHD and the autism spectrum. Which, oh wow, a lot of those show up after all of those wonderful little inoculations that have all those heavy metals in them as adjuvants. They're just adjuvants. They're there to make sure they have a longer shelf life because y'all ain't taking them fast enough. Now this does go on for quite a ways. Um, giving you all kinds of different side effects and, and uh, let's see, oh here's other ways to lower heavy metal toxicity. Maybe this will be one that you can do without doing the chelation therapy thing. So if you're experiencing symptoms of heavy metal toxicity, chelation therapy along with a reduction of common toxins may be able to help you. So how can you lower your exposure to heavy metals in the first place? Well you start by adjusting your diet and then consider taking supplements that can also help. To lower heavy metal in your diet uh, by limiting or avoiding these foods, and stay away from farmed fish like tilapia. They can contain mercury or other, other heavy metals, um, dioxins, and PCBs such as in aluminum cans. Common food sensitivities and allergens like gluten and conventional dairy, like when your immune system is working to fight allergens, it has less energy available to detox the body, so stay away from those things. Non-organic foods, which contain chemical pesticides. GMO foods, especially corn and soy, which basically means you can't buy anything off a grocery store shelf. Because damn near everything's got either corn or soy or both. Packages and processed food that contain many synthetic ingredients and additives. Also avoid alcohol, which makes it harder for your liver to process the toxins. So if you wish to try uh, practice chelation therapy at home, these are some detoxifying foods that you can put into your diet regularly. Garlic. It contains sulfur which helps your liver detoxify itself of heavy metals like lead and arsenic. Cilantro. 
It's a tasty herb and a great addition to many recipes, including fresh juices, and it's well known for its ability to act as a natural chelation agent. And Brazil nuts. I love those things, but oh my God, they're a bugger to crack. Brazil nuts are one of the best food sources for selenium, which is an important chelator that research shows can help the body rid itself of heavy metals, especially mercury. And I got to tell you, ladies, you should be taking selenium. Selenium is vital for your breast health. And if you want to keep the girls healthy, get some selenium in your diet or make sure that whatever multivitamin you're taking has selenium in it. Very good for the girls. Very good. Um, now, there are, uh, you can also engage in some natural chelation therapies that will help with chosen, chosen supplements like chlorella. Um, it's a natural chelator. Vitamin C is also an antioxidant and it helps to reduce free, um, free radicals. Milk thistle helps to detoxify and cleanse the liver and probiotics, which improve the gut, immune system, and detoxification. So, there are also bentonite clay chelation therapies. I know some people that do those. I just can't go there. Just, yeah. But um, all kinds of wonderful things. I know Snuffles. Who you call? Snuffles is barking. I'm going to go ahead and just share this. Y'all can finish reading it on your own because I'm getting close to the end of my time. Um, there you go. That's right, Rob. Healthy boobies. Got to keep the girls healthy. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go over to the pig real quick and let you know what happened this date in history. Actually, the word of the day is offensive or offensive. It's any element or objective of objective reality that shatters your most cherished delusions. That's offensive. In the quotable quotes section, we are born free and we will stay free. Ah. Trumpel Stilskin. Uh, yeah, but you have to work at it. You cannot, you cannot expect someone else to make it happen for you. You got to do it yourself too. This date in history, the 8th of February, 1920, Swiss men decide sleeping on the sofa isn't the worst thing that could happen. So they vote down women's suffrage. Hmm. Hmm. And also this date in history, Excuse me, Belch. The 8th of February, 1935, a man destined to be featured in NFL trivia quizzes, Jay Berwanger, is first man picked in first NFL draft, drafted by the Eagles, and he never plays in the league. Wow, that would totally suck. Be the first guy to be drafted in the first draft and never play. Dude, that sucks. Sorry, but it does. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Y'all been listening to The Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 10. I keep wanting to say channel 3 because that was the old one, but it's channel 10. And uh, I will be back next week, Wednesday, for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of The Rocket Chair. But be sure to stick around because Grimner's going to be on with the lovely Moose Girl. And those two are going to get all freaky on you during the Freakers Ball. And I know it's going to be a good time had by all. I may actually even stay up for some of it. I don't know that I will make it, but I'm going to sure give it the old Grammy try. Just put that out there. Also, um... Tomorrow at noon is the Dork Table with Flash Rooney Dork. I may actually try and listen in on that tomorrow before I run into town and do my errands and go to my uncle's and all that other fun stuff since I don't have to actually work, you know, as in go to my J-O-B tomorrow. I've got other work to get caught up. So, yay! Oh my lord, here comes a bubba. The slinky dog has arrived. Um, also, Sunday at noon Eastern Time is Grimner. He's going to be playing the blues for you. And I'm sure there's going to be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat. And he will be closely followed by Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo-ass behind the woodshed. 
That's what's going on this weekend. All kinds of other way cool stuff going on throughout the week. So be sure to check back often because you never know what you're going to find that just might make you go, sweet. So, um, where do I want to go? Something, I know, I'll go here. Major Smedley Butler. Good old Smedley Butler. This is from wakingtimes.com, by the way. Lots and lots of Smedley quotes in here. Um, let's see. I s <laughs> Bubba singing. I served in all commissioned ranks from second lieutenant to major general, and during that period I spent most of my time being a high class muscle man for big business, for Wall Street, and for the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer for capitalism. I suspected I was just part of the racket all the time. Now I'm sure of it. Yeah. Good old Smedley. He was one of the original whistleblowers. And war is a racket. It is a racket. Matter of fact, I'll just read this a little bit. War is a racket. It always has been. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to the majority of the people. Only a small inside group knows what it's all about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few at the expense of the very many. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. In World War I, a mere handful garnered the profits of the conflict. At least 21 new million or 21,000 new millionaires and billionaires were made in the United States during the World War. That many admitted their huge blood gains in their income tax returns. How many other war millionaires falsified their tax returns, no one knows. How many of these war millionaires shouldered a rifle? How many of them dug a trench? How many of them knew what it meant to go hungry in a rat-infested dugout? How many of them spent sleepless, frightened nights ducking shells and shrapnel and machine gun bullets? How many of them parried a bayonet thrust of an enemy? How many of them were wounded or killed in battle? Out of war, nations acquire additional territory, if they are victorious. They just take it. This newly acquired territory promptly is exploited by the few, the self-same few, who wrung dollars out of blood in the war. The general public shoulders the bill. And what is that bill? It's your life. Yeah. Now this reader renders a horrible accounting. Newly placed gravestones, mangled bodies, shattered minds, broken hearts and homes. Economic instability, depression, and all its attendant miseries. Backbreaking taxation for generations and generations. For a great many years, as a soldier, I had a suspicion that war was a racket. Not until I retired to civil life did I fully realize it. Now that I see the international war clouds gathering as they are today, I must face it and speak out. And I think we all need to. If you see something, call it out. If you hear somebody spouting nonsense, call them out. Don't put up with it. Straighten people out. And even if they get into a verbal tete-a-tete with you, it's way better than going to war. Because you know what? Everybody is so proud that there hasn't been a war on American soil. Really? The drug war? War on drugs, yeah, war on terrorism, that's on American soil because each and every one of us is considered a terrorist 
by those that are the leeches that be. So if you really want to change this world, if you really don't want to fall into that racket, again, learn from history. Learn from our past mistakes. And don't repeat them. And educate yourself and educate others. But you've got to remember when you're educating others, they will only hear what they're, they're ready to hear. They will only understand what they're ready to understand. Browbeating them is just going to make them dig their heels in worse. So share your, your thoughts, share your opinions, share your information, and then let them ask questions. Don't force feed because it'll come right back at you and you won't like it because you'll have to clean up the mess. Oh well. That's my little bit for the night. Y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening and a wonderful weekend. It's supposed to actually be kind of decent tomorrow. So, yeah, play out in the yard. Go visit. Go carouse around for a while. God only knows what I'll be up to tomorrow. But remember, out of all of it, whether you really understand it or not, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. And if you wonder what that enough is, enough smiles to get you through the sad times. Enough sunshine to get you through the rain. Enough hellos to get you through those hard goodbyes. Good night.